recording in five, four, three. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 12 of Choke Bros Podcast. This is Zach Burrell, joined by... Sam Riley, how are you guys doing? And Angel Garcia. We are going to discuss the pre-release this week, uh, along with some of our initial thoughts about uh, the new cards coming out in Opus 5 and our experience with them so far, what we believe to uh, see coming up in the uh, upcoming meta, as well as uh, we're going to gloss over the upcoming events that we've talked about, kind of the same events for a couple of uh, episodes now. Um, but we do have one to add, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a local one. Um, so yeah, go right into it. Uh, so, upcoming events, we have the Boston uh, Crystal Cup. Now, Sam, you're going, right? I am, yeah. I'm going with uh, Petit, Tampa Petit Cup uh, winner Andy Carmona and Jonathan, who was uh, top eight of the Petit Cup, I believe, as well. Yep. So, yeah, actually. They're, they're buddies from Miami, right? Yeah, they're friends from Miami. Yeah, Jonathan was, um, yeah, I conceded into the top eight. Um, yeah, yeah, and then, cool. as, as courtesy, Andy was super nice and gave my wife the plushie, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's what date again? Uh, I don't know, like the 6th? <laughs> uh, it's next weekend, man. It's not this weekend, it's next weekend. So next weekend I'll get a, a plane on Thursday, whatever day that is, and then I'll fly to Boston and and stay and, and drink lots of uh, yummy beverages and eat lots of greasy pizza and play test, I guess. The, tra- the uh, travel food, right? For yeah. All the yeah. Are you going to eat the uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, donut roll thing? I have no idea what we're going to do. I'll, we're going to get this. I'll tell you what we are going to do. We're going to get the Taco Bell. Or Taco Bell. That's, sorry, that's what I was thinking. Taco Bell. Yeah, Cinnamon Delights. Cinnamon Delights. Yeah, Cinnamon, Cinnamon Delights. Delights. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Taco Bell. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we should try to do that. Anyway, yeah. um, also the Cards of Evil East Tournament, uh, the 31st, that's in Orlando. Dude, I'm so psyched about that. Yeah, right. That's hosted by James Lockwood. Yep. Dope prizing. It's going to be a giant trophy. They've got a Kai Arts. 100% cash payout based on uh, entry. Yeah. And also, three packs per entry. Like, that's for the first 24 people, but yeah. Okay, that's first 24 people. Yeah. Um, and then the new one I wanted to mention was anybody in uh, Tampa area who goes to the Cool Stuff um, in the Brandon Tampa area, they're having another promo blowout uh, this coming weekend, the 24th. Yeah. Uh, Del- double promo, you, yeah. Yeah, each time you win a match, you're going to get two promos. And then two of those promos... Uh, they didn't specify it's going to be in the same set or not. I think it was distributed across the games, but two of them will be foil. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing, though, is it's not just the same old that we've always had. There's going to be Vincent's, and there's also going to be, I believe they said, Sign. Japanese Sephiroth. Which is the cheapest I'm finding those for right now is $60. Right, so you win your game, pay it. So yeah. that'd be sweet. I'm um, excited to see that happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, just want to go over that kind of quick. Uh, you want to start talking about these new cards? Yeah, sure. So we're going to straight, go straight into uh, Angel's uh, card of the week. Yep. So, so yeah. So, hey guys, I'm um, here with the card of the week. Uh, I have selected this card mainly because, uh, not because I just like it, but mainly because I, the, the, I think the first week that the card was uh, uh, spoiled, uh, people were saying like, oh, Earth doesn't need this. Um, yeah, something that Earth is looking for. Yeah, which it could what? be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which could be through. And we talk about Momody, the uh, back of the. Ice is looking for stalling. Yeah, so we're yeah. talking about Momody. Yeah. Exactly. So basically, uh, it's an Earth card, of course. Uh, it's a three CP card. Uh, backup. Uh, that basically its ability is that uh, you can pay zero, and you give. Uh, brave to one of your followers and you can do this once per turn now in your main phase in your main phase yeah that is correct yeah Yeah. Uh, and also uh, yeah so yeah that, that's true. Now, the thing about this card that is um, that got me uh, question is why people think that this is only meant to be for Earth. I mean, the cards, it is a Earth element, but you can do so many splash on different decks. Like, for example, the Water Earth that you, uh, that you guys went to Kansas uh, Petit Cup. That yeah. card would have been insane, in my opinion, if you give Gao Brave, and, oh, yeah. and he's huge. Yeah, I, like, I, I agree, because if... if... For example, so right now the, we're playing Mask Woman. That was to deal with Emperor. That being said, Ice has exploded since then, right? That's true. So being able to uh, attack and keep your guys back on the defense is insane. Yeah. 
and in yeah. addition to astrology and all the other ways to do it, yeah, yeah. Like, on the they're, they're, they're small synergies, right? Exactly. Like, like Delita, for example, like even just using yeah. like Delita pumps them up. Oh no, yeah, yeah, I was talking with one of my friends about Delita being with brave. It's like yeah. it's hard to deal with, uh, but but yeah, I mainly thought about the water earth uh, uh, matchup because you have uh, mingle, so it's not like you weak against uh, lightning. Because lightning, you know, all say combo. So it's like people don't want to have like an active forward, but this on a water deck is really good. That's a good, that's a good point. Because so giving your force brave can actually be like a, a weakness when you're playing with cards like Al Cid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But in this case, or yeah, this also gets around that if you have Minwoo because you're, yeah. you're playing this in a deck with Minwoo. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. And that's why I like this card being on not just an Earth deck, a Mono yeah. Earth. What about Mach Six? Like, isn't this like, <laughs> like turn a, one Mach Six, turn two, play Mobidi, attack, dull, Jocker. Right. Well, you're right. Isn't that, isn't that the problem? Though? Is like, it's, so there was that discussion earlier that I was uh, earlier this week on the the fans page, where we're I mean, it was fans page or US group, and we were talking about like when is it worth it to attack with mind to draw a card. Or to party attack or not draw a card. The same thing happens yeah. with the Mog. It's like sometimes you're going to tap to draw a card, sometimes you're going to attack with two to get into point of damage. Uh, yeah. And, and Moody lets you do both, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I was going to say is I like it in other colors to kind of, you get that uh, strong sword Gilgamesh feel, you get that cloud feel where you, you're brave yes. and then you can use your active ability that requires dulling before the blocks are declared. Uh, like Vincent with UV, right? Like what if you just give Vincent another way to stay brave when he attacks? so he can both attack and use his uh, death penalty. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. So I haven't looked at all the abilities, but I'm sure there's a few combos in there that would be really sweet. Yeah. Especially like Gal, like you said, like if you could attack and use Rage, that seems pretty good. Yeah, Gal has to be the biggest, I guess Vincent, obviously, yeah. but Gal has to be like the biggest turn on for me, for Moody, because you have how big Gal gets, and you have things like uh, the, 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 the Pot Cat, for example. Small yeah. cards are going to make Gal a lot bigger now, mm -hmm. and a lot more force to be reckoned with and he's just brave as nuts on that guy. <laughs> yeah. How about Jet? Oh that's interesting because Jet is not played primarily because exactly like like he he's best on defense. That's why he's so big. He's best right. on defense. But he also has the break ability. Like he has that kind of cloud feel to him where you can just like recycle like there's so many new things like minor and stuff that you could recycle copies of him. That's true. Give him break yeah. attack, break a guy and good luck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would be surprised if Momadi uh, doesn't find the same kind of niche backup like slot that Minwoo does. Like, sure, certainly there are there are water decks that aren't playing Minwoo. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, mostly, you know, you're I mean, I was, Momody. yeah, I was thinking that Momadi could be actually the nono of this set. It's three CP That's rare, and it could be like. So it could find its way on almost. That's a good point. Earth. So so no no gains you CP literally whenever you attack, mm -hmm. whereas this figuratively sort of uh, does give you CP, um, and it does value. It does matter like how much. You know, a lot of times you're you're attacking yeah. and you're trading points of damage because you think that you're going to win the race. Of course you don't know. Exactly. But it does make me wonder like how much the CP value assigned to each of those damages. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's greater than zero and moment he costs zero to use. So you are getting the CP advantage here. Yeah. To, You're getting a non-zero amount of advantage. It's just For sure, for sure. It's, it's, it's how do you quantify that? How do you, how do you like put that into terms of like what the CP value of, of Brave is, you know, like is, right. for example, if Guy didn't have Brave, what would the C CP value of him be? Would he be fine as a 5k? Probably not. I mean, still fine against Ice because he's hard to get through, but you can't attack with him. So what value do we assign Brave the Brave ability? I have no idea. There's no way to really like put that right. into numbers, but mm -hmm. it's certainly greater than zero, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Light Cloud saw so much play and so much dominance during Opus 1 and, and 2 because of Brave. Two I mean, obviously Omni Slash is like a sweet ability, uh, right. but like, you know, like Ice is not bonkers. <laughs> Yeah. So like yeah, I or even active is why I love strong sword so much. Like it's such a sweet um, like ability but intended to be able to attack and then yeah. use your ability before blocks and still get your attack through. Yeah. So if you ever get catch them on the back foot, like they can't swing with two guys. Or I'm sorry, they, if they have two guys they can't swing with one if they're like close to dead or whatever. Um, they know they're gonna lose one. It's a lot yeah. of pressure. I really like it. 
Yeah. Hey, Zach, real quick. Angel's phone is malfunctioning, so he's getting it set back up. Yeah. Um, okay. But, so, yeah, that makes me wonder. So, there's these these Earth Golbez decks that I tend to like. I like the, I like the Golbez decks with Kafka and Shantoto. Um, but they, they play the Golbez or they come back. Does does Golbez get a lot better from Amity? That's actually pretty... Yeah, I didn't actually think about Golbez because a lot of the weaknesses, you want to swim with your giant 9K. Yeah. Or either a block to break him or... Or to hold him back on defense. But you also... Yeah, exactly. You want him on defense so you can block multiple things and break it. Yeah. So, yeah, being able to give him Brave is... And then there's the Opus 4 Ramza. Uh, okay. I feel like a lot a lot of forwards like that with Brave are, like, just way better. Uh, even Onion Knight. Oh, right, right. What about Onion Knight? So, like, you can attack with your Onion Knight, give him Brave with Momody, and then blink him back in to attack again. Right. So, there's, I think, like, maybe Momody and the Earth Golbez shell could be stronger than most people are exploring right now. Agreed. Um, also, like, Pugilist, do you want to bang in with him? And if you can leave him back on defense, too, he's usually pretty giant if you play the standard unit version. Yeah. yeah uh, Angel's giving you a call back right now real quick to reconnect your skate. You good? Can you still hear us? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry for that. I don't know what happened. It is echoing a little bit. A little bit. Oh, you got uh, it? Yeah, I had his... Uh, okay. Audio All right. Yeah, so I think Momody and Golbez is something that we could certainly explore. I, I mean, I'm always a fan of those versions, too, because I also really like uh, summons in my Golbez deck. I like Fanfret. I like Exodus. Yeah, um, Fanfret's insane. And <laughs> yeah, that's something we'll have to... Well, that's something we'll definitely have to talk about um, as far as testing uh, for both the, the Cards of Evilly tournament and for Boston, uh, as well as future tournaments. Um, yes. Yeah, so that, that's, that seems good. Uh, let, let's move on from there. We're actually going to transition with Momody into our pre-release discussion. Um, sure. So I kind of want to gloss over the six packs versus nine packs thing. I feel like right. there was 20 threads on it. Like that that was a little, like I, I was getting a little old, sick of the threads. It was, every thread was this card's busted, this card's not. Like, yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, I think everyone is in agreement that we want nine packs. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. even saw some people say, "Well, I would like twelve pack." Well, sure, of course. I would also like fifteen packs. Like, <laughs> yeah. sure. If I could open a box and build a sealed deck, that would be great. I would just build a constructed deck. Uh, but yeah, no, I think nine packs is where we're at for backup reasons. Mostly for backup reasons, I want to be able to play my my forwards that I. Pull. Otherwise, there's no point in pulling them, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we can. I, I think no we're all four colors every pre-release because I was forced into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're 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 kind of all in agreement there. Um, yeah. So I really want to move into like cards, like the cards that did impress us in the pre-release. We'll start with Momody. Easily the first backup you put in your deck if you open, right? It doesn't matter what colors you are. You don't have to be in Earth. You just play Momody. I had two in one of my pools. Yeah. Would you have played them if you weren't in Earth? Uh, yeah, because you can play your backups by any color. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's insane, right? So Momody was an impress, uh, impressing to me. Uh, I'd, I'd have to go back and relook up the drafting rules uh, as to whether or not you can play backups with any color. Not if there's nine, I believe. Not if there's nine? No, no, that's sealed. Oh. What about dra what about drafting? Oh, drafting. Um... We'd have to look into that. No. I, I'm asking you because, it, like, Momody is actually a first pickable card to me. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's quite literally, as I'm tearing open the packs, there's cards you want to see. You want to see Yvonne. You, you, you know, you want to see some of the, any of those light and dark cards really you want to see. Uh, right. They're, they're, you want to see Cloud of Darkness. There's cards obviously busted that you want to see, Diablos. But if I'm looking for for the lower end cards that you, that the first thing I want is Momody. That's the first, Momody's a rare, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the first card that I want to see. That, that's why I would say like it's the no no. This is like three CP rare. This yeah. you know, is the only difference is Earth instead of Wind. <laughs> now yeah. the uh, second card that you'd want to see. I don't know if you're gonna agree with this, but Mateus. Okay. Maybe no. Actually, not only do I disagree with that, but maybe that should be the first card I want to see. Right. Yeah. That's Mateus. <laughs> Also, the first card I want to see and constructed. That's the card that transitions the best from uh, limited to constructed. And right. I think people were freaking out, like, "Oh my gosh, what were they thinking? This at common? This uh, is stupid." Really quiet. Okay, can you can you hear me now? Not like earlier, but yes. Okay, I think the prop. So people are saying like this at common is insane. 
Um, we can't believe this is a comment. This doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. As well, if they were this, it, can you hear me now? Still? Yeah, I know. I was gonna say, how about why? Uh, why is even a card? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get there. But so the thing is, is that if they were designing it with limited in mind, then there are just so many cards that you just can't have an answer to without removal spell. And removal is hard to come by in this set. I love Matthias at, uh, at common. Like I just, right. I think that's where it deserves to be. As far as constructed playable, it's certainly heroic level. Not even close. Yeah. Like a one CP card that kills anything is nuts. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that would be number one or two, maybe, with Mamadi uh, there. A card that really impressed me, which I'm looking forward to see if it can do things, is Twilight Odin. Uh, we already have that in the form of Mecha Chocobo. Uh, I feel like those cards are similar, as in you need to be able to attack with them. One of them needs to be able to hit, the other one does not. But right. yeah, but they, if they block your, your Twilight Odin, uh, you can still kill their guy. There's there's pump effects, whereas like that doesn't work with Mecha Chocobo. If they block, your guy's dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The difference is, is that like Lightning has so many ways to set up this attack. Uh, you know, they can clear your board. They clear your board. They have Cyclops. Amon. They have, Amon, oh, yeah. They have, yeah they, they have ways to give your guys haste. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I guess it's similar because because uh, the Trunkle gets gets like Shivas and there's all kinds of dull effects and synergies in there. Uh, yeah. But it, I don't know. I, I am interested to try. I know it's kind of like an Angel of Penance, which doesn't really see play, right? Um, but it has it has seen play. Setup, but yeah, right. But it, it has seen play, particularly in the 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 wind decks, the lightning mm -hmm. wind decks. So <laughs> that could be interesting. Um, I would say the card that I was most disappointed with, and I'm sure that some of our listeners will disagree with me, is Orphan. Um, okay. I feel like Orphan is a trap. Um, I would not draft it into a draft deck unless I was solidly in ice. I wouldn't mm -hmm. splash for it. Uh, and if I did, it would have to be a very aggressive deck. I think that people are overrated the, the dull two things. Shiva costs two. Like, it doesn't have a body. But there's a huge difference between six and two. And right. if it's... Especially when your cards are very limited in your hand and what colors you have and all that. Exactly. Exactly. And and, and sealed, you're never going to have the five ice characters. Like, I don't want to say never, but like, I, I did three pre-releases. I know you guys both did three pre-releases. Yep. I don't think at any point any of us could have drafted among all of our pools <laughs> Never. a deck where five ice characters yeah, were Especially the with only five packs to open. Six. I mean, six packs. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. But no, it's, yeah. Just, oh, it's just yeah. not going to happen. No. That being said, I, I, I'm not taking away from Orphan and Constructed. I think Orphan's probably insane. Um, yeah, and like a mono ice or very heavy. And in mono ice, uh, an ice splashing fire, ice splashing water, and maybe ice splashing earth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe even Ice Splash and Lightning, since those are the more aggressive decks with the actual character. So lightning. just not Ice Splashing Wind, then? Is that <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, actually just not Ice Splashing Wind. Because I think in the Wind, you want cards like uh, Cactar, you want Maria, you want these solid uh, characters that are going to stay on the field, so you're losing those spots that would be ice. Right. Um, whereas like with water and stuff, you're, more, you're you're definitely interested in some of the other cards like Leviathan, you're interested in Kuchelain, you're interested in the summons, uh, particularly in the uh, Earth version, you're primarily interested in Vanille and the Hecatons, uh, the Shantoto, which is ice. Um, so yeah, basically the wind is like what I think harms it. The fire decks can just get away with just the sage backup or the red mage backup solely because it wants to give their guys haste or make it not blockable but they're mostly focused on their their ice cards their jelly bots and, and tapping and doling and, and just getting in those points of damage uh i guess uh josh from birch's deck is a it's kind of a exempt for that because he does play a lot more fire forwards like Ferion and vb's um so maybe even in his deck you're not going to want orphan because uh, you're not going to get off that freeze effect. Uh, but maybe doling two guys and putting a body in the field is better in decks where you can give it haste, like lightning, where you get the red mage that gives you guys haste. So doling yeah, the two guys, getting a body, and attacking, and, and freezing when it attacks. But mostly I'm just thinking, like, if you get the body and you're doling two things, the attack needs 
to happen. Like that's what makes it significant. Yeah. It, it's yeah. good that you can attack with a couple guys and then have Orphan back to block, but even in the mirror match, like that's that's where you're gonna lose the game because they're just gonna shiver your guy or just mm -hmm. your guy and then end the game on the spot. Yeah. Whereas like yes, if you attack with the orphan by giving a haste with either Belias Goblin or if you're enlightening Red Mage, then at the very least you're freezing the guy also. Which I think is, is is a huge change. Yeah, but so much CP and resources for that, that thing. Right, it's yeah. six. It's so six like, drop. Plus, right. yeah, six drop plus making a gain haste is more CP. I, I agree, and like, unless, unless we're talking goblin, which you've played prior. Oh yeah, true. But Lias at least replaces itself. But yeah, yeah. Red base certainly is CP intensive, well, but you're ending the game hopefully. Does. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. But goblin, you've also played earlier, so you you know. You're gonna get the value for it, and it's only one CP. It's it's quite different than Blyce. It's yeah, yeah. In that instance, it's it's a lot better than Blyce. Many more instances where Blyce is much better than Goblin, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So what other? So I know you played Fawn. Uh, how do you yeah. how, how do you see it transitioning? <laughs> so it, Vaughn. it wasn't just good; it was yeah. extremely good for you, right? Uh, if I resolved Vaughn early and they didn't have Ilnarsh, I probably won that game. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Ilnarsh was the one thing that walled me off because uh, whoever was playing Ilnarsh also played five ways to activate him. Yeah, I, I also was able to wall you off with Palin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because because yeah, move it because dealing because dealing AK to it's pretty sweet. Yes. Yeah. Um, by yeah, the way, that was insane. Yeah. What? I was like, by the way, that is a card that also impressed me. Halo. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I felt like that card just. Yeah, I, I just didn't think that card was gonna be that good, but like playing it because I mean I I forgot that you can actually deal AK with it. You play it, dole two yeah. and dole it and deal it's an hard. extra one K. Yeah. Yeah. And now the funny. This man over here also pulled Botanist in a seal pool and got to use Botanist to get his Palom back. Yeah, because I double, I double Palom, which is that was that's insane. pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, I, I was done dealing with it. And yeah, he just like and gets it back. Oh. Yeah, you attacked me and I blocked it. I know you got me thinking, why would you block that? And it's just like, well, I'm gonna play another one and then I'm gonna Botanist, yeah. like. Yeah. But uh, no, Vaughn was insane because yeah. he calls one guy, makes another one out block that takes care of two on defense, and then both times I had him, I also had cockatrice, so I could just say your three guys can't block this turn. Cockatrice, cockatrice is an interesting card. I would like to I see that. I would like to see that transition into standard uh, oh, constructed play. Sort of mid rangey earth deck, like ice earth or fire earth, could easily play cockatrice. What's the uh, What's the one drop lightning? Is it Rama? That's what it is, right? Rama, yeah, seven K to a damage board. Yeah, that's probably the weakest one. Yeah. Uh, probably not because it's bad, but because the other ones are better. Well, uh, because like you have, yeah, they're just they're just like extremely strong. Right, like Matthias is strong. The Leviathan it's is not a fire one though. Because the fire one is two, that's the I for the yeah. another I for to 10k. Right, it's actually just the opposite. Like, it just costs more than most of the other things. Because if you want to do something, you got to pitch an extra card. You have to pay an extra CP. And, and, yeah. 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 Uh, Speaking of one cost, what about the, 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 the Flondit? Uh, Flondit was sweet. Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. Are super taxed. Like, if, if they don't play backups really quick, if they try to be aggressive or anything, you can start just ripping their hand apart because they pitch a card to attack. Blocked. Yeah, I wasn't sold on it being like bonkers, where some people thought it was bonkers, but like it, it, like if I play, if I had it in my sealed, I was considering playing it every time, but it wasn't like an auto include. Yeah, like I had two in one of mine that felt pretty good. Yeah, right, right, and, and I think that uh, the more you get, the better, and not just because of consistency and drive, because they're also just decent in multiples. Um, yeah. You know, obviously you can do it twice in the same form, making them pay two, but there's also like making them pay for each one so that their their double attacks are, you know, better. And, yeah. and there's reasons to do that too. If you plan on counterattacking, uh, that they have to consider whether or not they want to be able to block. Right. Um, which is sweet. I love I love how both Cockatrice and that card are versatile on the attack and the defense. Right, right. Like yeah. whereas at least the they give CP. at least the at right. least the ice card doesn't really do much on the on the defense, which is I guess fine, because Ice doesn't want to play defense anyway, right? Like yeah. the the only card that Ice has is good at defense right now is Sensor. Mind you it's very good. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it is the Ice card that is good on defense. Yeah. What, were there any other cards that you thought were really good? I liked Black Knight, I like Bonk uh, Bunker. Vermilion? What was it? What is it Vermilion, the fire drop type oh, of the fire? <laughs> oh, well, like I was talking, I was mostly talking about uh, 
limited cards, but sure, that card is nuts. <laughs> I'll say I've got one for limited if you want to talk about. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, Vermilion so is 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 the five drop guy that just keeps on attacking. And this so this is this actually happened. Uh, I attacked <laughs> my opponent blocked. Yeah. His guy died. I untucked my guy with a little sound effect that I made, and then I attacked again. And he looked up at me. He said, "Wait, what? How many times do you get to do that?" And he's at five points of damage. Okay, yeah. So I said, "Until you concede." <laughs> yep, that is what you said. I was right next to you. Yep. How many times you do that until you concede? Yeah. Uh, and he didn't concede. He just blocked with all these guys, and then I attacked him and killed him. Yeah. So I guess he proved me wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was it was like super interesting uh, that card. So be, besides just being a limited all star, the card's obviously constructed playable. Yeah. If fire got a card, that's what it got. I have no right. doubt that it is the best fire card in the set. Uh, I don't think that it's close. Yeah. I the, the fire backup really is pretty good. sweet. That goes and gets a summon and blows up and Armageddon's yourself to kill other guys. It mm-hmm. Armageddon's yourself to Wrath of God then. Uh, Yes. So it blows up all your blows up all your backups, destroys all their forwards. Uh, yeah. That card's pretty sweet. I don't know if I see a uh, constructed play or not. Uh, certainly, just the limited play. Someone will try it. Yeah, it's just a matter of if it's. It will win games. Will it win right. tournaments? I don't know. Right. I, I'm leaning towards no. Uh, so I think my favorite constructed. It's actually a two card combo, but primarily the one card is minor. Okay. Uh, the four CP Earth backup. That when it enters the field, you get to take a backup uh, from your break zone at your hand. No, just all has to be is backup. So essentially, it's two CP. Assuming mm-hmm. you can pitch one to put, play it on turn one, or later you just get one back. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, it is a standard unit, and you can pay an Earth and one Dullet sacrifice get any forward back from your break zone. Yeah. Now. If you combine this with the ice card conjurer, yep. which gets back a standard unit from your break zone, no, yep. doesn't care if it's forward back or whatever, it makes this little loop. Uh, so like in my my first uh, pre-release, Vaughn was like, all I got. <laughs> well, yeah. So I was able to play Vaughn, and if they ever answered him, I just cracked minor, got him back, played conjurer, got back minor, replayed minor to get back a backup, and then I just had a full hand again. Had Von back, replayed him, and they had to deal with him again. Yeah, it was well, a super good uh, strategy. Play, playing that with um, with uh, the the two CP wind backup that bounces your own character to draw a card. Yes, so you can bounce the conjurer. Uh, that was that just felt nuts to me too. I actually had that in one of my sealed pools, and then oh, yeah. felt insane. Pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh. And then the com- I think this would be the community pick, right? We've seen everybody talk about this. Also in Earth, Master Monk. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Master Monk. I, I had three in one of my sealed pools. I had two in another one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I just the Master Monk was insane. <laughs> I had so many ways, especially with Ravager. Oh, uh, yeah. it's oh that's gross. <laughs> yeah, I was playing. I was playing it in all of my Ravager decks. It's um, funny. Yeah, because on the first uh, pre-release, I actually won. One uh, like two of my games because Ravager Master Monk. Yeah. It's like doing so much damage. Yeah, it's yeah. just yeah, those are two like same. insane combos. Yeah. AK your active dude. Yeah. <laughs> so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out this podcast uh with with Zach's uh with Zach's tidbit. But before we do that, I do wanna just say uh, next week's podcast, we are going to open a case of uh, Final Fantasy. Um, it's going to be super excited. Uh, Opus 5. Uh, we might live stream it, but either way, we're open a case. Mm-hmm. If you want to know what we think about individual cards, that's going to be a much longer podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm probably going to talk about what commons the first time, the first like couple times we see them, and then yeah. we'll just probably skip commons and rares and go right to the foils for selection. right so i i think we will we'll have something for everyone we're gonna we'll start with the comments we'll talk about what we want to see for drafting what we want to see for opening the sealed and then yeah. obviously we'll, we're, we're going to talk a lot more about the heroics the rares and the the, the legendaries um mm-hmm. and the foils um <laughs> so we're going to do that we'll probably do that we'll probably do it live but either way we'll be opening the case that will be next week so that's super exciting uh so i'll have zach close this out um, so yeah, uh, question for this week is, do you think that the backup summoning sickness rule is okay, or would you like to see it not exist? Now what I mean by this is, uh, it doesn't come up often, but it can come up if you play uh, wind um, and sometimes other elements, but mainly wind, where if you play a backup and you find a way to activate it using a Sura, Oracle, what have you. No, no. Uh, you. 
No, no, also. <laughs> you cannot use activated abilities or special abilities that require a dull in their cost. So it's like they have summoning sickness. Now, it's not as intuitive because they can be dull for CP if you can activate them. So there's that little bit of a disconnect because of their function as, you know, what kind of card they are versus extra abilities they may have. However, like we were just talking about the pre-release with Momody, uh, you could play Momody and immediately use the zero to give something brave because those are required dull. So I think it makes a little bit of confusion, but I was wondering what uh, the rest of the community thinks um, about that rule, um, if they think it's okay, if they like to see it changed. And this is not because you want to do broken things with no-no and Zemus. This well, is I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, I, I like broken things with, think it's with, okay. with no-no and Zemus. <laughs> yeah, no-no and Zemus. Wait, sorry? I do like broken things with no-no and Zemus. Well, cause, yeah, because you could just go no-no's on the field, you just play Zemus out of nowhere, attack with one thing, activate Zemus, and you start the unblockable chain. So, like, I get that it balances out effects like that, mm -hmm. but I wonder what the game would look like if that wasn't a rule. Yeah. Well, are there right now, are there characters, are, are there are there characters or summons, whatever, are there cards that give characters haste? Is there a way to no. give your backup haste currently? No. no. Okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I'm super interested to hear what the listeners think of that too. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it should stay that way. Oh, me too. I just yeah. was curious what yeah. uh, people think about it. Um, there is an interesting thing though. If they ever make uh, what to use a magic term, manlands, which are backups that can become forwards, kind of like the monsters right. do, you could then give the backup haste because it's also a forward, and then you could do weird stuff. But right, which was a thing. If I if I understand right, it was a thing in the chapters version of the game. I believe I there were backups that been confirmed at some point on a stream that as well, could that we transfer to get something. Yes, like that. but that's super interesting. Uh, there, there, there is, and just so you guys know, you can in fact dole a backup for CP uh, because doling it for CP is not the same as doling it for any ability. Doling for CP <laughs> does not have the dole icon, therefore, it's just doling as part of the CP usage. So the backup can't be used. So, so for example, some things that I, I like to do is in, in the monsters deck is I will play no no, yeah. mm -hmm. attack with a monster to untap. The correct CP that I need to use. Yeah. Also, sometimes no no her self. Himself. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, right. Sometimes <laughs> no no. Uh, to, uh, if they call the droid or Green Dragon. Yeah. Right, so that is interesting. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so we'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, as always, please uh, like, share, hit the subscribe button on YouTube. It shows us that you're listening, that we're not just doing this to spend our Tuesday nights talking to thin air. <laughs> um, we're super excited about Opus 5. Uh, we'll be heading up to the Cards of Yulis tournament here, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, right? Yeah. Oh, so actually, yeah, Boston, see, that's why I'm getting messed up in my weeks. Boston's actually the week yeah. after that. Right, so, right. all right, so Boston is sometime, I think, I, I really do think uh, Boston is on the 6th, uh, and it goes into the seventh, and I'll be flying back on Sunday. Um, yeah, that makes sense, yeah, because the seventh would be the following. Uh, yeah. Oh no, it'd be the seventh and the eighth, right? Right. No, it's the sixth and seventh. It starts on a Friday. Oh, start. Oh, ah, that's right. I remember that. Starts on a Friday. Debacle. Saturday. Yeah. So yeah. So thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you guys. Um, and we're gonna talk to you later. I'm Sam Riley. Zach Burrell. All right, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.